In this tutorial, we're going to add one last element to the texturing tutorial we completed last week. Uh, we're going to revolve a bottle, and then we're going to put the texture map on uh, that will allow us to add transparency to our label texture. So I'm going to start off in an orthographic view as we always have in this instance. And I'm going to use my CV Curve tool. I'll set it for two. And then I'm going to draw the shape I'll need to revolve that bottle. And as always, I might add more points than I actually need because it's much easier to delete these than add them. And I'll hit return to set the path. I'm also going to center the pivot and then I need to place that pivot where I'd like this bottle to revolve from. I'll hold down D and I'm going to move the pivot down to the bottom and on the inside left where it would revolve from. I'll now hold my space bar. I'm going to go to services and I'm going to go to revolve and I'm going to choose the Y axis I may reset this before I proceed. And then I'm going to choose polygons. And there's a window that opens up, and if you wanted to, you could extend it even more by dragging on the lower right hand corner. I'm going to choose, instead of quads this time, I'm going to choose control points. And what that will do is give me my geometry with fewer polygon faces. I'm going to send the pivot, and I'm going to move it out from where it had been revolved so that I, if I needed to I could go and I could change the path and in doing so change the shape of the bottle. Now at this point you can customize it if you choose depending on what kind of bottle it might be. Once you have what you want then we would add our texture to it. So I'm going to go to my perspective window because I think it it bears taking a look at it, this because you'll see that the shape is pretty jagged. But if you hit 3 on the keyboard, you'll see that if we were to add a smooth function to this, we get a pretty decent bottle. All right, so now I'm going to go back to 1 on the keyboard. And I might uh, reinforce the, the thought that the lower the polygon count, the easier it is to introduce texture maps and manipulate them and move and sew if necessary. So the lower the count, the better whenever you start working on something. I'll right click, I'll choose Assign New Material. I'll put the usual Arnold on, AI Standard Surface. And always a good idea to give it a name. And I'll proceed out to the 2D Render Mode and I'll click on the checkerboard. Now, very often you might get an error message like this so it's a matter of just closing this out, selecting the geometry, and then going back to your material attribute, and once again going out and clicking on checkers. It's just a bug that sometimes appears inside of Maya. Now you'll see that the texture map is pretty messy. So all we need to do really to get this started is to hold down our spacebar, go to UVs, and click on cylindrical. And you'll see that it wraps it around that bottle uh, based on the cylindrical shape that it is. Now, I want to kind of manage this a little bit as far as the checkerboards. As you recall, we would like those checkerboard boxes to be perfectly square. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this virtual tool and I'm going to hit four on the keyboard so it's clearer. You'll see there are these two little red boxes on either side of this virtual tool. If I click and drag them back and snap them, it's a good way to start off with your texture. You'll see now it's distributed my checkerboard pattern pretty evenly. Now I'm going to go to the UV editor. And once I'm in the UV editor, I'm going to scale this to fit a little bit closer inside the parameters of the actual checkerboard. Now with cylinders, because in the case of this bottle it's not perfect, 
down at the very bottom of the bottle itself, the very base. Uh, it doesn't know quite what to do with those. But they're really kind of insignificant because the label is going to be on the front cylindrical shape of this. So I'm going to start by going to UV Texture Editor. I'll hit R on the keyboard, and then I'm going to scale this down to fit inside that quadrant where the checkerboard pattern would appear, like so. Now, these are little strays that they are the ones that are under the bottom and are not significant. So very often what I'll do is I'll right click and I'll go to UV and I'll uh, get these UVs and I'll start to just kind of drag them in uh, out of the outside perimeter of the actual checkerboard that we need to maintain uh, the parameters of. Uh, I'm going to go to my object mode now and I'm in my object mode with my geometry and that allows me to now export this out to Photoshop. And once again, if I wanted to view this perhaps with a view blue skin, I would probably go to Image and click on Shade, and you'll see that um, the uh, texture here is showing me a red skin. Now, there's a good chance, because of the way it was revolved, that my label would be on backwards. Uh, now, that might be a false positive, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it stay as red. Once we introduce the actual texture in Photoshop, we can decide if uh, we need to reverse the polygon faces on this. It's a little a step we really haven't covered, so if we don't have to do that, uh, we can avoid it. So the best practice now is to simply go to Image, UV Snapshot, and then I'll go to my Source Images, and I'll call it Bottle Skin and I'm going to click on Apply and Close. Remember, if you get an error message when you click on Apply and Close, you are not in the true object mode for the bottle. Simply click off on it, click on it again, right click, choose Object Mode, and just to make sure, reselect. And we're gonna go into Photoshop and now build out texture. Now that I'm in Photoshop, I've opened up my PNG, I've added a background layer of white so I can see the UV map a little easier. And I've gone and just created uh, a simple green layer with a wine label I found out online. And I'm just kind of placing this anywhere in relationship to the UV map. I can always move this around once I get into Maya. I might even just take it and put that a little bit lower because I'm seeing here now where the bottle kind of arcs down. So the safest place is going to be down in here where I know the bottle is just a straight cylinder. So I'm going to maybe leave it kind of like that. And what I need to do now is I need to put the texture on the bottle, but I also need to generate an alpha channel because the alpha channel, like we can add a bump texture with, also allows us to change transparency in the transparency node. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the UV and I'm going to go to Image, Duplicate, and I'll click OK. Now my objective is to have a white area where the label will be so that that remains opaque and then a grayish area in the background to give us translucence of the bottle. So I'll simply go and get my magic wand tool I'll set the tolerance to 1 because I've got a solid green. I'll click outside the shape and I'm going to find a gray that I want. We've got a 25% gray and I'm going to go ahead and fill that now. So I'll hit Option Delete on the keyboard. And if I wanted to, I could select the white area up here as well and close that out. I'll deselect make one more selection, invert that selection, and I'm going to make that white. And I'll deselect and save. Now, just like our alpha channel for the bump map, I want this to be a JPEG. So I'll just call it uh, A-L-P-H-A-T-R-A-N-S, a transparency, and I'll choose a JPEG. 
and I'll save that out and I'll click OK. Now that I'm back in Maya, I'm going to right click on the bottle and I'm going to choose Material Attributes. I'm going to make sure to break the connection between this and the checkerboard, so I'll put my cursor directly over the word color underneath the base tab and I'll choose break connection and then I'll follow the color tab back out to add my texture that I just created. Now that I'm back in my, I'm going to right click on the bottle, go to material attributes, I'm going to right click over the word color under the base tab, choose break connection. I'll go back out through my file and I'll connect that new PSD label. And you can see how well that worked. So I'll select it, I'll hit 3 and roll off. You can see it does a pretty respectable job. So the next thing we want to do now is uh, we want to make our transparency channel work. So I'll go to my material attributes one more time. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for geometry. If you recall, we introduced our bump map here for our door. Well, this is where the opacity uh, texture is added as well. So I'll click on the checkerboard. I'll go out through File, into my folder, and I'm going to get that alpha transparency. And you won't see an immediate change because with the Arnold Render engine, we have to be sure that we also turn off the opacity or opaque quality of the geometry as well. With the bottle selected, I'm going to go to the Revolve Surface Shape. And I'm going to open up Arnold. And I'm going to click off on Opaque. Now, I won't see any difference in this until I actually start to play with the render engine. So I'm going to be sure to have a light. And I'm also going to shine it on the bottle and adjust it so that we have a clear idea of what's going on. Now that I've got my light on and my Arnold Render view up, I can see that the bottle looks pretty decent. If I'd wanted to, I could have gone back into Photoshop and played with the gray background of the Alpha channel for the transparency, but I think this works pretty well. And that's pretty much all there is to it.